I say I'm quite satisfied with how this turned out. I'm gonna take the now, sanding what? paper that I've got. I'm gonna see if I, I'm just gonna sand one part. <laughs> What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now before we can get into today's video, I've quickly got a chain ring swap I need to do from the factory one onto this C634 uh, I believe. 34 oval chain ring and we're gonna swap it over. I'm quickly gonna do it and I'll show you guys the before and after of these two things and just a massive difference, something like a chain ring can make on your bike um, when it comes to the looks of the bike. So let's do this real quick and then we'll move on to the nice thing. Alright guys, so we are back on the carbon frame, the one that we prepared. Now if you don't know about this, go check out the videos. It's quite interesting how we do it. I don't show the whole process, but it's very, very interesting to me. And uh, we've been sanding half of my life away. Um, but like I said, I'm doing this between work. Now, there is a few things that makes a massive difference. Um, I thought it's super expensive to buy water sanding paper or sanding paper that's water-based. They call it silicone carbide waterproof abrasive paper now that makes a massive difference when it comes to sanding your frame it leaves it super super smooth um, it looks like this most of the time um, all the clear lack and everything that you're sanding off so you can just wash that off afterwards um, but it makes a massive difference in leaving the frame nice and smooth now what I've done is I've actually the front triangle I've polished um, we've sanded it down I've polished it again and then what I did is I put some clear lacquer on there. Now, unfortunately, I made one little mistake just now when we put on the clear lacquer. A small little piece of paper got stuck into the frame. And I'm not known uh, to have this steadiest of hands. And when I tried to take off the piece of uh, sticker or paper, um, I kind of touched the clear lacquer. So I'm going to have to do that again, which is not bad. But guys, the results are super good. It's very satisfying. But uh, I must say this. It's a lot of work. So the guys that do this for for a living, for work, it's it's what they do. Um, it's that's why they charge so much. Uh, I must say, you spend this much hours on something and want it to be perfect, because you can see all the small um, defects like that. And uh, so if you if you send your bike to someone to do, and they charge you quite a lot of money, it is worth it. Now I'm going to show you guys the front triangle at the moment. It is still wet so I can't touch it, but what I'll do is I'll take it inside the store when it's dry and I'll show you guys all the extra things I did. I did a few things that's quite nice to the frame, um, but for now, let's just enjoy how cool this frame looks. It looks like glass almost, and uh, I'm very, very happy at the moment. Let me show you. Alright, while we wait for the frame to dry just a little bit more, um, it's the first day in about two weeks that we've got some sunlight um, and I believe that helps the clear coat harden just a bit better, especially when it's nice and warm like this. Now, um, while we wait for it to dry, so it's more um, movable and we can handle it a bit easier, 
what I've done is at the bottom of the frame where all the stones will hit the frame and um, at the rear of the frame um, especially where all the where the tie will throw all the dirt and hit the frame there um, I use the spray paint um, that I've used before and it's very very uh, durable and I've used it on, on um, shiny objects um, for example I've tested it on a spoke I've sprayed a spoke and it sits onto that spoke without sanding the spoke or anything so that's a very, very nice thing now what's nice about this spray paint is aerosol spray paint uh, the product is made from quick drying thermoplastic acrylic resin. Um, now, what's nice about this is this moment it did something, it kind of expands and then it moves back into position. If I can say it like that, it, it doesn't, you can't see it, but if, if, where I usually use this, I spray it onto something and then I would take my nail and I would push onto it um, when it's now nice and dry. Now, you'll see the small little mark, then after a while it would kind of heal itself, be gone. Now this is not a very expensive paint and it worked. So I thought I'm going to try this on the on the carbon frame and just give it that bit of um, protection at the bottom. And then what I used is glue devil. Now the name is not very good, but this was all I could find um, and it was super cheap. Uh, it works very very well. Now the only thing that I found about this clear lacquer, like, usually you spray your thin layers, a few layers, and then it looks good afterwards. And um, they always say never spray too much at once because you'll get runners, etc. Well, not with this. This I actually had to put on quite thick uh, the very first time. I sanded it again um, about three times and I've got the results that I do have now. Now, this is not something, I won't put the links of these things in the description because I think you'll use your own clear lacquer and your own ideas when spraying your frame. Like I said, I'm not a professional, don't follow all my steps. I'm just doing this because it's fun and it's something new. And uh, there's a few things that I'll show you guys now when I bring the frame in that I would have done different and the one boo-boo that I made. Um, but that'll fix now, luckily I know how. So let's see, uh, let's get the frame to dry a bit more and then we'll talk about the frame a bit. You know that times where things just doesn't go your way and everything doesn't work out? Well, we've had a few of those days and uh, this is actually day three of me trying to finish this video. Now the frame is finally, I'd say dry enough to end a little bit more and um, to touch it here and there. Now what I'm going to show you guys is the extra um, bit of layering that I put at the bottom at the back for extra protection and then I'm just going to show you guys the coloring at the moment. Now what we've done is we've sanded the rear triangle. It looks quite good. Um, there's still a few spots as you guys can see there. Well, I think I need to go a little bit deeper and uh, sand away all those little chip marks. Then this should um, also have a perfect finish at the end. And then the frame itself. You guys can see all the carbon layering shining through there, which looks super cool. Now, the one thing that I did have, I've actually had a small little chip mark right there. And I'm not sure you guys will be able to see it. I hope I can find it with a light there, right there. As I move along, you can see it right there. Now, that actually looked quite bad at a point. Now, what I did is I put the clear lacquer on there quite thick, and then I started sanding it down, sanding it down, sanding it down. And um, we got to a point where it's, I won't say it's invisible, but it's very, very good. And then the other small little um, imperfection I've got there. It's a small little line running through there and then it's got two little dots. I don't know why I've been sanding this every time and I've sanded quite deep actually and I thought I'm going too deep with that but it still made that little line with the two dots and I thought I just throw on a sticker over that and call it a day and then the sad thing is um, I don't have a super cool uh, spring booth and whatever so unfortunately while hanging outside to dry um, there's a few little uh, particles and dusts and whatever that landed on there. You can see there's one there. And as we come through one uh, every now and again, you can see one there. On the down tube, there's quite a lot. But um, the things that I've read is you can actually polish that out. So with a good polish and the, and the good rag or whatever, you will be able to get out. Uh, the one thing I need to remember, and I need to keep on telling myself, that I'm not finished with this, unfortunately. We're still going to put on the decals. Um, we need to put some decals on top here. So I will be covering this little imperfection here. Like I said, you can't even see it or feel it, um, but I know of it. So when I put the one sticker there, that will be gone. I need to put the decals on the side. But what I think is, and you guys need to tell me this in the um, comments down below. Um, some of the bikes, you get a decal running on the side here or you get a big decal of the name at the bottom and that usually looks super cool um, for me personally I don't know about you guys but let me know down in the comments I'm gonna put one big decal here 
or we're going to put it on the side again as they come from the factory. So let me know what you guys think will look good. And then the one thing that I'm super sad is before I put on the black paint, uh, I thought the frame was sanded quite good and I thought the repair work was quite good. Now it is quite good, but um, before I put the paint on, you, you couldn't see any imperfections on the, on the frame and I thought it looked super cool. But the moment I put the black on, you could actually see some of the imperfections on the frame and small little bits and that's everywhere. But now the thing that you guys must remember, most of the rear triangle actually sits over this part right here. Now where my repair work is, you won't be able to see it that much. So once again, I can't be too hard on myself for the first time I'm doing this. And then <laughs> I've got a little logo that I've got on the front. Now if you guys know your bikes, you know your brand, you'll know that this is a most, um, most sign. I've actually got a few of them. I've got a red, blue and whatever color. But I took the gray one or the silver one and I put it on top of the um, front tube right there and uh, then I applied the clear lacquer. Now that came out pretty good. I must say I like that quite a lot. It's like I said, it's not a silverback logo, but it's something else. And this is not a silverback anymore because it's been damaged and I've sanded off all the paint. Um, so yeah, we're actually, I will put on silverback again, but we're making our own little uh, custom design at the moment. So what I thought on this bike is I'm going to try to do it, the, the clear shine all over the frame. Um, I do like the, the carbon weave showing. I'm oh, not the carbon with the carbon layering and then the other thing I did is I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this you see it very very well in the sunlight if you look right here you'll see there's a line right there and then there's another one right there so I actually masked off this whole side of the frame and I took that uh, experiment I talked to you guys about the plastic coating or whatever you want to call it I used that one <laughs> and I sprayed a layering here on the back, quite thick, on the bottom brackets, right there. And there you can see the serial number still a little bit, but uh, it doesn't matter too much. I tried to keep it and then at a point I thought now I'm going to spray over it. And then we took it all the way down on the frame just for some extra protection. Now, you guys can't really see it, but there, right there is the line running from the paint to the normal carbon um, shining through like that. So there you can see the carbon shining through and then on this side it's just black paint which looks super cool and then what I'm going to do is on the rear triangle as well um, just for that extra um, protection same as the, as the uh, front triangle I'm going to maybe see I'm thinking of taking a line through like this and then making this whole part black with that um, paint this one yeah and bind the mesh right there, this one here. It's the thermoplastic paint, uh, which is quite good and quite strong. I've used that before, and like I said, it is quite strong. So I'm thinking of making a line right there, spraying this whole part black, especially here where you put your wheel in, and it does get scratched up quite a lot, as you guys can see right there. That's on the rotor, and then the rear derail and all the things. They do damage the rear triangle quite bad. And then there's a lot of way, I'm not sure if it's stones or mud or whatever, that hit the frame right there. But there's a lot of damage on this rear triangle that I'm going to try to sort out. Now guys, like I said, please don't be keyboard warriors. It's the first time I'm doing this. So if you've got any good advice, leave it down below. Um, but if you've enjoyed what I'm doing with this frame, maybe like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe. Um, like I said, it's the first time I'm doing this and, and I'm enjoying it. It is a lot of work. So if you decide to do this, make sure you've got time, make sure you've got the right things. Because I've just been using what I've got and it's not as easy as you think. So I'm going to do some B-roll on the frame and then uh, when we get to putting on the decals, I'll see you guys again. So guys, thanks for watching the video with me, um, or 
making these videos with me I guess because I do take a lot of comments from you guys and I do take a lot of things into consideration when I do these videos but this is way out of the, my comfort zone and uh, but I have been enjoying it we'll get back into how to videos and all the repair videos and so on once again um, I've actually took, uh, taken a small little breather this week and that's why I haven't uploaded for almost a week now but I'm gonna put this video up I always say when I take a breather or a small little break it feels so uncomfortable making a new video and you feel out of rhythm and whatever so yeah this will be the first one getting into it again I usually upload about three or four videos a week so if you guys do enjoy it go check out all the other videos share it with your friends subscribe and like and leave some good vibes down in the comments and I'll see you guys on the next video